Science Concepts with Mr. P. For more science concepts, search me out on iTunes by typing Papa Podcasts. You can contact me at MRP Lieberman, all one word, at gmail.com for additional assistance. Or when we are multiplying value. So let's look at here the accuracy rule for multiplying and dividing. Okay, so remember, anytime you are multiplying and dividing, uh, a lot of times your teacher will say round to the nearest tenth or thousandth. In this physics course, what you're going to be responsible to do is to figure out how many digits you need to have in your answer if you have a long list of numbers in your calculator. So what you're going to be doing is you have to figure out from the question how many numbers, how many of those numbers do I need to keep. Okay, so when multiplying and dividing, the answer has the same number of significant digits and when we're multiplying and dividing, we're looking at what we call the significant digits uh, with the fewest number of significant digits. So, in other words, our first value has three significant digits. Our next number that we're multiplying together has one significant digit. So according to the question, it says when multiplying and dividing, the answer has the same number of significant digits as the measurement with the fewest number. So the fewest number is one significant digit, which means our answer has to have only one significant digit. So when we multiply these two together, this is what we get. We get an answer of 2.24 millimeters. Okay, I'm not going to go through uh, how the units cancel out. We'll look at that when we get to, uh, to those chapters. So the answer is 2.24 millimeters. Okay, but the least number of significant digits in our question is one significant digit. Which means we need this two value. Okay, but before we just jump and say it's two millimeters, we need to see and make sure that that number that we're ignoring, the next number that we're ignoring, is not a five or greater. Because if that number is five or greater, the number would get rounded up. Okay, but because the number after this two is a two, it's lower than five, so the answer would be just two millimeters. Okay. Okay, the precision rule for adding and subtracting. When adding and subtracting measured values of known precision, the answer has the same number of decimal places as the measured value with the fewest decimal places. So when we're adding and when we're subtracting, we are looking at only decimal places. We don't care about significant digits. We are looking at decimal places. And we are looking at the fewest number of decimal places. Okay, so in other words, we have one decimal place, we have two decimal places, we have two decimal places. So the least number of decimal places in our, um, in our answer, or sorry, in our question, is one. So that means our answer is going to have to have only one significant digit. Oh, sorry, only one decimal place. So answer here is 11.85 millimeters, if I, if I was to add, add that. Okay, only thing is... Least number of decimal places is one. We have the one decimal place there. So that means our answer, well, this is not part of the decimal place. This is it. We need this 0.8. But before we jump and say the answer is 11.8, we need to look at the number that we're ignoring here. Okay, that five. And because it's a five or greater, the number 11.8 gets rounded up to 11.9 millimeters. Okay. So remember, when we are multiplying and dividing, okay, when we're multiplying and dividing, we're looking at the least number of significant digits in our question for our answer. Our answer has got to have the same number of decimal places as the least number in our question. Okay. In terms of adding and subtracting, we are our answer must have the same the same number of decimal places as the fewest number of decimal places in our question.